Hello, and welcome to BSG Webinars. I am your host, Dan Carney. Whether this is your first webinar or you've watched them all, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to join us today. Today we've got hop problems. We've got hop solutions blending in with BSG sol hop solutions. It's our 27th episode since the start of the webinar series. So if you haven't seen any of the past webinars, please visit our YouTube channel and search for BSG Craft. There you'll find all our past webinars as well as other great content from our wonderful suppliers. So be sure to check them out. For future webinars, a link can be found on our homepage at bsgcraftbrewing.com as well as bsgcanada.com. We also announce them in our newsletter, which is the best way to learn about new products and important information. So please sign up if you haven't already. That can be located on our homepage as well on the left-hand column. And if you'd like to, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we post daily. Coming up this summer, we'll have a focus on technical webinars that will range from new products, distilling, sustainability, seltzer, hops. Well, I could go on, but um, please stay tuned. We'll be announcing a lot more soon. So, like I said, you'll hear about them first in our newsletter, so please sign up. In today's webinar, Eric will give us a presentation. We'll have a couple polls peppered in there, then bring Jason from Stack Deck on for questions. So if you have any questions during the presentation, direct them to the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Best question asked today wins an 11 pound bag of sativa hops. So um, be sure to, to ask some questions, win some free hops. So now, if I could be so honored to welcome Eric to his first BSG webinar. Just a little background on Eric. Eric is a hop evangelist, speaker, entrepreneur, as well as the hop brand manager here for BSG. Eric first fell in love with hops as a co-founder and farmer of C and CEO of Mighty Axe Hops, a fully integrated hop farm and marketing company. Eric serves on Minnesota's Rural Finance Authority and is a co-founder of the Central Minnesota Young Farmers Coalition. He's also a TED speaker. So welcome, Eric. How's life on the farm today? Wow. Uh, hi, I'm doing great. Uh, farm life is good. Uh, got some rain finally. It's been really dry most of, most of the continent, but got our nice rain today. So I'm doing good. Right on. Well, thanks for joining us, Eric. I would also like to introduce Jason. Uh, He'll be joining us in the Q&A to talk about his hop blend experience. Jason Hunziker is the head brewer for Stack Deck Brewing Company here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Welcome, Jason. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, Jason, could you give us just a little background about yourself, just kind of where you came from in the brewing world and things like that? Uh, yeah, sure. I uh, kind of started out brewing just like uh, most do home brewing. Um, and then, you know, um, it kind of piqued my interest enough to the point where I went to school, uh, out at, uh, fur brewing. So I did that. And once I was through with school, I, uh, worked for Omni Brewing and I was their lead brewer for about four and a half years. And for about the past year and a half, I've been the head brewer at, uh, Stack Deck over in downtown St. Paul. Well, awesome. Thanks for uh, taking the time today. To join us and uh, yeah absolutely look forward to it eric i will let you take over hey hello can you hear me i'm driving now here we go welcome to the presentation blending in anyone else anyone else catch that I'll, I'll do it again never mind i won't that's me i'm eric i'm your presenter today i'm the bsg hops brand manager and uh let's get it going so for starters, we're going to talk about what is BSG Hop Solutions. Um, you can read it too, but BSG Hop Solutions is our way of incubating innovation and accelerating that in hops uh, for BSG. Um, it brings together everyone across our multiple teams here at BSG. So that's supply chain and sourcing, operations, uh, warehouse management, marketing, sales, customer service, 
our technical center and down in Shakopee and the scientists there. Launched us in originally in 2019 with our initial round of blends, which we'll be talking about today. Um, and, you know, so far, um, BSG Hop Solutions has been a blend focused product category. So, you know, these are all blends of current hop beer blended um, from a whole cone to whole cone and oil matched. So that previous releases each year, they're as consistent as possible for the best possible, um, you know, stability year to year and your experience with the blended hop product. So here's the kind of a little peek behind the curtain, if you will, of how we go about developing a new product. So there's the first step is ideation or conception. And so that it comes from a customer or is a panel of customers we work with to come up with new ideas or an, a kind of a concept we want to explore or something internal. You know, we see stuff in the industry, um, see some trends. We want to make sure that we're offering things that match those. Then we go through internal development. This is this is maybe one of the longest steps, longest steps of the process. This is uh, looks like uh, me and some other people of our hop team rubbing and smelling and blending a whole lot of hops. In fact, my freezer right now has more hops in it than uh, the freezer should have here at home. But that's, I guess, what uh, work from home looks like for my role. Um, and uh, we go through all sorts of different trials and stuff internally. Then we release those after that stage. Uh, and they go into commercial trials with the brewer networks uh, that we're part of to do commercial trials. That's where we do a lot of the honing in on what will ultimately become released, the final product. And that's where all the cool, fun stuff happens, where we get to do all the great branding and marketing and where you get to start enjoying and seeing the product out there and having it as an option for you to use. So what the future kind of looks like, um, we're going to keep doing more blends. We could talk about that in the Q&A, but I feel really strongly about the value of blends to the industry as a whole. Um, there's a couple of trends that, that I really believe in that we'll see in the future of the hop industry. And to me, blends are a big part of those. Um, you know, blends are, at the end of the day, a way for your hop supplier and you to engage in a conversation around what you need out of your hop experience and really talk about it brass tacks. So like, I think one of the things that we'll see is, is the actual name of variety. Uh, those, of, those of you who brew in the call knows as well as I do that, you know, not all Cascade is the same as in the next box of Cascade that you get. And so there's challenges in there of consistency. There's also challenges in there of finding that uniqueness that you wanna pursue for your next IPA, the highlight. And blends allow kind of consistency and uniqueness at the same time, which is really something powerful about them. And I think, and I hope really that the you know, the bad rap that, that blends have had in our industry. And we're starting to turn that around with products like this. Um, we'll have other new hop offerings. I can't say more than that. But what I can say is the code names for some of the new things that are coming out in 2022. Uh, Anteater, Bandicoot, and Catbird. So if you're in the chat, uh, I would love for you to try to decipher what those mean. Um, and I won't say anything more than that. But there's my special super secret information that you all get to have for coming here today. So I hope that you enjoy that uh, again, sneak peek. So now let's dive into what we have currently. These are the five hot solutions blends that we have available right now. Those are Sativa, which we're going to talk about today and then go in deep uh, with my good friend, Jason from Stack Deck. Zamba, you might've heard of it as under a name Samba with an S instead of a Z, same blend, new name, it, uh, Evergreen, one of our new blends this this calendar year, Sequoia. That is a blend that used to be uh, a set of, set of numbers for us and is now fully named. And then Nobility, also new this year. Um, I'm gonna go through each of these one by one and kind of talk about their performance um, kind of on a rub and then in a beer. Um, and let's start with Zamba. Zamba is my personal favorite. Um, I actually before i even worked at bsg when i was back in my, my previous life of, of growing and and working with my own hops um i had a zamba beer and <laughs> um i remember that beer forever it's you know you remember those beers that you have uh and and it sticks with you the experience um the aroma on this in a beer is so immense and I'll, let me swap over to the uh there's a spider chart for it but really, I think what's so fascinating to me about Zamba is it was designed for biotransformation. Uh, if you are going to use Zamba, I highly recommend using it in, you know, a dip hop or during active fermentation, some way where you get some yeast activity at the same time. And you're going to find that this just a, an enormous punch 
of kind of like sweet tropical stone fruit. I mean, you have, you see that there, but like, it's like dripping wet, um, totally delicious. And from my experience, a very unique kind of, um, presentation of flavors that even, you know, in beers where I know, you know, the varieties that are in them, I've not had that experience replicated. So this one is uh, easily my favorite. Not that, you know, we should be playing favorites. I, you know, all of them are my favorite. This is my favorite, though, let's be honest. Okay, next up, sativa. Uh, sativa with an S, as we call it now. Uh, sativa with an S, that's our uh, hazy IPA blend. You know, Zamba works there too, but sativa was really designed to give you just the enormous wallop of hop flavor when you use a whole lot of it in, in your process, wherever that is. Um, I think the note, the notes that sound most to, to me for sativa uh, is that peach and the ripe mango. And then interestingly enough, in the beer, there's a little bit of lime flavor that comes in too. So here's the sensory, uh, uh, the, the sensory wheel for sativa. So you can check that out. Um, <clears throat> couple of notes on mine from beers that, that that were brewed with sativa and we'll get into this too but some of the ones i think were really fascinating were uh, banana runs candy sweet bubble gum and then again that peach coming through in the beer is really fun next up nobility guess what kind of beers nobility is for you got it right congratulations yes noble style things um it's it is uh, so I've had a handful of beers of nobility and it's funny because again, here's the thing. Here's the uh, spider chart again, but it's funny to me because, you know, a noble hops, I always think about noble hops is what, you know, all, all of them are fairly subdued, especially it's what you're looking for. in in most, um, you know, European German style beers, you're looking for a hop character that isn't too wildly pronounced like we get in, you know, some American styles. And so what I would say is, is, you know, you can think about noble hops and like a spectrum from like very spicy and kind of like sharp, um, uh, clean bitterness. And then you've got things that are more like floral or like German, German citrus, which tends to be more like orange blossom versus citrus peel or juice or, or, or flesh. Um, and, and the floral kind of melon orange world and, and nobility is really kind of down the straight line in the middle there. Um, perfectly crisp nice and bright um certainly not spice um but just goes well in all of your sort of lager needs uh next up sequoia it's my second favorite blend okay now we're really getting into our rankings but this is one of my favorite blends too i mean it's it's so cool to me because to me the name for this one goes directly to what it is this is a west coast blend sequoia will make a west coast ipa that you'll love it's got everything that you expect so it's got american citrus plus Pineapple, mango, and, you know, not the drippy, wet mango of, of, uh, of a Zambo or Sativa experience. More of the, like, you know, when you're eating a mango, you get a little bit of the skin. And it's more that um, the green citrus. You know, we can't really interact here. So I'm, like, <laughs> feeding, feeding you concepts and trying to look at your heading, you, you know, you nodding or providing some sort of affirmation. But I can't. So I'm just going to keep going. And then, and then the pine to back it all up. So it's got everything you're looking for for a West Coast IPA, which, you know, not to be uh, sacrilegious, but I do find myself enjoying a clear beer now and then. OK, I'll admit it. You got this on. You got this on tape. And then uh, the final blend is, is Evergreen. Evergreen is a really cool one, too. So this one is kind of very, I would say, quite experimental in that we were going for a blend that would perform well in like pale ales or like IPLs, if anyone remembers that style um brewed ipas you know so to, it 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 has the most interesting rub of all of these hops which is very very heavy stone fruit and then in the beer it's a lot of lime like huge amounts of lime pith and zest um kind of throughout that whole that whole experience um but definitely it's a less pungent here's the uh, sensory notes a less pungent pale ale or less pungent american ipa or you know hoppy experience um really uh really fun though you know i know we're not all out there like climbing over ourselves to try to make a pale ale or like an ipl but i think evergreen has a lot to offer in some of these newer styles like or techniques so like if you've you know cold ipas where you're really getting some really pulling the flavor notes through as opposed to aroma with some of the techniques in there or like dip hopping where you're getting that slice 
of the hop aroma that you're really looking for. Um, I think Evergreen has a lot to do in sort of kind of outside of the norm uh, brewing techniques. So highly recommend it for that. And with that, that's my presentation for the five. And we're going to get me to stop talking and invite back my buddy Jason to talk, go deeper in uh, Sativa and your questions and answers. And I got a couple questions to get him going. But if you have questions too, like, come on in. I'd love to have you. Well, hey, Eric, real quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hey. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah. Hey. If anybody, uh, you know, tried some of the hot blends. I want everyone to know that I cannot vote as a host and or panelist. And so the the data that you're seeing, very real, you know, very low. Um, no, no tomfoolery is going on in this election. <laughs> <laughs> ah, political jokes. No malarkey. Just talking about polls. Uh, Jason, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm great. How are, how are you? I'm doing great. Are you ready to answer some extremely hard hitting questions about I mean, your experience? I'm ready, to, I'm ready to dive deep. Okay, me too. And hopefully uh, those of you who have joined us today have got some uh, goodies for us too. All right. I will share the results here um, just so everyone can see them. It looks like we've got, you know, a handful of people who've tried them and some that really want to try them. So let's uh, let's open up for questions. I'm sure there's got to be some that uh, want to kind of know more about the hop blends. So as we're, uh, if, you know, you just interrupt me, Dan, if you got some stuff popping up from our from our pals who've joined us today. But yeah. uh, just to get us going, Jason, I'd love for you to just, you know, wax poetic here about your experience using a uh, sativa blend, like kind of how you approach the recipe, uh, brew day, um, and obviously we'll, we'll talk in between these. And then like kind of in the final product, you know, like what do you get from it? And I got some fun notes too, because now that it's been, you know, it's been about a month since I've last had this beer, some cool things have happened. So. Absolutely. Um, you know, Honestly, the way that I kind of approached this particular beer um, was since I, I've honestly never used a hot blend until I used Sativa, I decided that I was just going to basically treat it the same as every other New England IPA that I make or, you know, like I normally had start out in the same spot and you know, uh, work my way up from there, you know, so I didn't want to uh, do anything different. I really wanted to let the hot blend shine in this one, if you know what I mean. Um, so basically, I just kind of started with a uh, base of RAR uh, North Star Pills, which is a, a great base malt for a New England IPA if you're looking for a base malt for a New England IPA, by the way. Uh, so I started out with that and then uh, the usual absurd amount of wheat and a crazy amount of oats. And then uh, from there, I just uh, use strictly sativa in the whirlpool. And then um, I dry hopped with copious amounts of sativa uh, <laughs> as well. So um, if I remember correctly, you were uh, 10 plus pounds of barrel in that dry hop. I was pretty close to that. Oh, so we like that. Eight, eight or so? Yeah, I was going to say. It was about, I want to say, in the high eight, something like that. Yeah, we like say, say 10. You know, it's 8.8. .8, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's, let's not go too far ahead of ourselves. But, yeah, I mean, um, we used about eight pounds per barrel, which is, you know, relatively heavy for us. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we normally brew... New England IPA after New England IPA. So that's kind of our right in our wheelhouse. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, did that and then, um, it turned out wonderful. Awesome. Just fantastic. Jason, when did you guys brew that beer? Ooh, at this point, I mean, we probably brewed that one. I would guess 
two and a half months ago at this point, yeah, something months. like that. Problem here is can done uh, last day of March there. Yeah, and that like that uh, particular beer did not hang around long. It flew off the shelf. Uh, it all of our kegs were drained crazy quickly. Um, we have people pretty much asking us. I would say every other day when we're going to brew that one again. So turned out great. Everyone really liked it. Uh, I loved it personally. Good yeah. problem to have. So Eric, talk about how it's, you know, how it's tasting right now. Well, I mean, Jason, it's, it's awesome. I mean, um, you know, I think all of us here don't expect a ton of shelf life out of a hazy, um, particularly like with this level of hopping. But I think one thing that's interesting to me is, you know, you went like wild with the hops. And so one thing that's happened is, you know, when we first had it, it was very hoppy, right? You remember it was uh, the level of citrus and tropical was somewhat overwhelming. It was like very, very uh, kind of like sharp pineapple almost. And then the mango. And now we're down to like, I always use this word because I try not to be too, too, um, too specific because that's, you know, we all have our own different things, but yep. like a very soft tropical melange of like, just like dripping juicy. Like it's, I'm sorry, this is like the last one in existence because yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, um, what's the candy? It's not actually banana runs like that other beer turned out, but um, like Laffy Taffy when it's melting in your mouth, like, uh, that yeah. of, like, like not saccharine sweet. Like it's not like it's not like whoever's making double dry hops smoothie seltzers in the chat, but like it's the it's the like oh man, um, extremely appetizing, and I'm sure I'm making people thirsty. So it, it's holding up really well, and I think one of the things that it makes me think about too with the, with you know a blend like this and and what's going on is like there's so much to do with timing in hop additions, uh, and then also like serving of a style. That'd be interesting to see, like, you know, even I had another one a month a month from now. What oh, was yeah. expressed out of it for sure? Be cool. Right. Well, uh, one thing that we did with the dry hop edition was we um, got that going. Probably, I would say mid fermentation, something like that. So yeah, there's definitely some biotransformation things going on with that as well. You know, um, so. Yeah, that one turned out really well. Um, I I can't speak highly enough of it, to be honest with you. So, so Eric, since we're focused on on sativa at this moment, someone asked how much dank Green Cousin carries over in the blend. Uh, not much at all. Uh, I think that was Steve who asked. Um, it is named uh, sativa out of admiration and respect. And it is a fully tropical, fruity, sweet uh, blend. Um, I would, I don't know, you know, your experience, Jason. I mean, I don't get any, any even hints of anything, you know, danky, no sulfur, not even like a bit of onion, which can sometimes lift in these, you know, not the kind of cat piss that can sometimes come from similar intensity hops. Um, I would say it's very clean, <laughs> not even yeah. green. Like it's not yeah. dank, it's not sulfur. But it's also not piney and not green and not resiny. You know, like it's nowhere on that scale to zero. Yeah. Well, I think that's a pretty accurate statement. I would say that um, it's definitely completely along the tropical route. So um, yeah, no, no green, no, no dank, nothing like that. But uh, great name nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> so. So here's a, a great question that segues from that subject. Uh, with a lot of the stone fruit flavors in these hops, have you experienced with using these in kettle sours? If so, any recommendations with using these hops? I have never had them in a kettle sour. I would love to have any of them in a kettle sour, although probably particularly evergreen, to your point of, um, of asking about the stone fruit notes. I do know that um, JR at Bold Monk Brewing in Atlanta has just released a, they do a lot of, um, you know, Belgian inspired stuff, has just released a farmhouse Saison with Evergreen. Um, I'm getting that in the mail soon. Um, 
And we'll be talking about that at an upcoming uh, uh, hot puddle thing too. So that'll be my first time having these beers outside of having these blends outside of a, you know, whether it's a hazy or a West coast or like a lager blend and, 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 you know, for nobility, that'll be my first having ha first time having any of these in sort of mixed culture um, or uh, sour beer. So uh, I'll get back to you. <laughs> my email, my email is around. You can find me on the internet. I will let you know when I get that beer. Yep. And you can also email us at uh, info at BSG craft and we'll make sure these emails get to Eric. So um, next question are the blends designed to be used throughout the brewing process or should they be focused on Whirlpool and dry hop additions? What do you think about that, Jason? I mean, they were designed for throughout the use, but you know, someone who's used them, I've only drank them. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't get a chance to use them in a, any edition besides the Whirlpool and the dry hop. But um, I believe that I didn't see any reason why you couldn't use them as a bittering addition if you felt so inclined. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, no reason at all why you couldn't bitter with that. Well, and I, uh, like I had talked about earlier, is like, I do think that there's a lot of other techniques, you know, for getting hop aroma into your beer outside of whirlpool or dry hop. And there's a lot of decisions to be made within those, but there's, I think there's a lot to explore yet uh, with these blends. And I will say that um, I've had almost every Zamba beer experience that I've had has been dry hopped uh, on fermentation. Um, you know, I don't think I've had a Zamba whirlpool, um, but you know, those, those decisions that you're making about when to introduce the hops and how are going to have an enormous impact on how those hops present and how they represent. And, you know, none of us get to do this necessarily, but I always think if I got to brew being a hop nerd, I'd just be like, all right, I'm going to make a Zamba IPA 18 different ways. And uh, one of them is going to be the best one. Right. And that might be some mix of things. It might be different volumes of use. It must be, it might be a different dry hop schedule or timing or duration or volume. I mean, this kind of thing is, um, you know, that's where the art comes in in brewing still, right. Is, uh, there's no straight up answer for any of this. Yeah. That's pretty much a perfect statement. I would say. Jason, are you, uh, intending or planning on using any of the uh, other hop blends that you haven't tried? Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, I was definitely planning on doing it anyway, but then after hearing Eric's presentation just now, I'm definitely sold. So, <laughs> it, I mean, it's happening 100%. So, for sure. Like, I definitely would love to use that West Coast blend at some point. That's the Sequoia. The Sequoia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's so cool. It's like, it's, um, well, I'm trying to like come up with some analogy for Sequoia and like how it, it, uh, you know, it's kind of a throwback flavor. Um, but how well it hits that character, uh, is really cool. Like the blend of American citrus, it's nice and clean, right? We're not getting any of the kind of new world, like not new world hops, but like kind of the new, <laughs> new hop, new hops and their, uh, you know, sulfury undertones, um, super clean, nice bitter, and the resin that, you know, made us all fall in love with IPAs originally. Um, love that blend, for sure. Well, Eric, do you, uh, do you want to talk a little bit just with Jason, kind of, you know, whether it's in the brewing process, um, you know, Jason, did you guys trial any of this stuff before you actually went and created this recipe? Um, you know, we actually didn't, we just went straight to town with it. We were just like, all right, you know, um, <laughs> I mean, I have had, I guess, um, you know, enough experience with both BSG and Eric to know that, you know, this was going to be pretty much, uh, right about, um, what I normally go for when I'm 
uh, creating a recipe for a New England IPA. Pretty much all the characteristics that I'm shooting for were described to me. And I was like, all right, let's, you know, let's just go ahead and do it. So we just dove right into it and uh, didn't look back, basically. Those are good results to have from just, you know, jumping into a recipe and letting her rip. So, Oh, yeah, 100%. I, I couldn't agree more. So, I uh, appreciate your vote of confidence, Jason. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think that underscores kind of the importance of the relationship that you have with whoever's supplying whatever you're using in your beer is, you know, the look, I want to talk to you about your hops, you know, our sales staff, everyone on the team would love to hear, you know, about your experiences and um, work together with you to make the best possible fine liquid, you know? Yep. 100%. Is, uh, incredibly difficult uh, product to make good, right? There's a lot of pieces and, and it's an agricultural thing. And so you've got to, you know, you got to have your hands all over it and, and really partner up because there's more than one person can know to do this thing right. Oh yeah, 100%. And, you know, um, honestly, I I would say before uh, this opportunity to try the Sativa blends came about, I had I had never used any sort of hot blends uh, in my professional career. It was always just you know, I'm going to create my own blends. And um, this has definitely just turned uh, the way that I view hot blends completely around 100%. It was just a great experience. That uh, blend turned out fantastic. So let's talk cheers about to you guys it. on that one. Great job. Well, thank you. And we should talk about that, although we just got a question, so we'll grab the question. But let's come back to this idea of like, perception and experience with blends blends in the past and like um i think there's some really like i was saying a little bit in the presentation that's something we could talk about for sure um that'd yeah, be interesting yeah. got a couple of uh fun things so i'll just grab this one from uh eric h he says uh he's asking this is for you jason having brewed with sativa what would you change schedule or amounts on a rebrew of the same beer if anything that was one of my questions we talked about before yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, I probably wouldn't change a whole lot uh, about that beer. Like I said, uh, it turned out really well, and uh, it was definitely a fan favorite at Step Deck. So I'd probably keep everything the same. And I'll be perfectly honest with you, I thought that beer turned out awesome, and I am just the worst about my own beers like i'm always like oh i want to change this and i want to change that like no matter how good they are they're never good enough and i thought that beer was great so to please me you you know you, something must be right <laughs> the uh so let's let's talk about blends then because that's one of the things there i think that's super interesting is blends are um they're already mm, like normalized I guess is one way to think about it. Like, you know, uh, uh, a standalone variety is a standalone variety, but then all of the boxes that have that label on it might be different or are in some ways potentially different from each other, uh, where they were grown or harvested or dried or, I mean, the, the, a number of variables on the farm side before those hops even get to your brewery are insane. And then the number of variables inside your brewery, as we kind of talked about, are also absurd. Um, so, like, that might be an interesting thing here is, like, you know, when you, for example, like, when you single hop a beer, you're really leaning a lot and asking a lot from that hop. But when you single hop with a blend, you're leaning on a number of varieties and what they can all bring. And you're bringing what, what comes across in this beer like crazy. And then the blend, too, is, like, it is an indescribable set of amazing flavors that you know you can't just pick out like oh, okay this beer is citrus and mosaic right like it's not okay. the same as but yeah, uh how do we say this nicely it's not the same as most hazy ipas on the shelf and i think that's oh, yeah. one for me is like just straight up as a hop consumer who like <laughs> is following i i 
please put the hops in your beer on the label. It really makes a difference for me. But like, it's amazing to um, kind of, I don't know, fall back in love with hazy IPAs when, when there's this unique flavor or experience inside the can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that makes perfect sense. You know, um, the uh, it seems like with the hazies, you know, um, it can be a little bit redundant, I guess. It's, I don't know. Maybe that's not the right term. No, that's a nice way of saying it. I mean, that's not necessarily bad. I mean, people love that experience. I love that experience. Like, oh, yeah, 100%. Really- the big three hazy IPA or is not a good experience. They're not good. Like those are great. Oh yeah. Exploration and trying something new. Is oh even- yeah, for sure. It's great to be able to get another, another, you know, like weapon in the hop arsenal, so to speak, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I will definitely be using that again for sure in, uh, my professional career without a doubt. So, yeah, that, that's a great way to put it, because if you look at like West Coast IPAs, there's seems to be a larger options to achieve yes. West Coast style, whereas with hazies, you know, you see your most common two hops used in a lot of them. Um, so, yeah, it, we just really wanted to kind of push something that said, here's another option. And, you know, it, we're, we love hearing the results that Jason, you had. And other brewers that we also had trial this as well as people who are buying it up. So, Eric, real quick, I wanted you to just kind of touch on availability and things like that. So, yeah, yeah we've got uh, we got we got sativa. If you want sativa, um, come on down. You can uh, contact <laughs> us. The website's got the information for the sales staff. They can take care of you. Um, it'll be back again for the next crop year. And like I said in my presentation, that next crop year of sativa is going to be much the same as this crop year because it's a blend. We're able to pull out of the same lots with similar profiles. We're able to blend targeting an oil profile that the current lot year had. Um, and that consistency is going to be part of what is behind these blends as we re- when we re-release them. Um, you want me to grab the question too, Dan? Well, yeah, we, we should talk about that because... Yeah we've had that come up with a couple of our different hop solutions and, you know, being the person that has created all the branding for these hop solutions myself, I can uh, tell you, I've had to make a few changes with some of these logos and things. And strictly the naming is nothing more than just a change that, you know, we had all our ducks in a row, but then legal came back and said, well, somebody didn't agree with, um, you know, the name of that, it conflicts with something that we have and you know so when you go for trademarking they don't always have all the proper things to say back to you to say go ahead much like the ttb that i'm sure most brewers have to deal with on labels so it's a lot love the ttb oh everyone does (laughs) so um so yeah they're nothing more than name changes but we kept them very similar zamba samba zamba um you know sativa sativa so yeah if you see that name change out there it's strictly that's it it's a name change no blend changes and uh yeah a lot of happy customers i know that and uh we got a shout out for you uh jason from troy l oh hey what up troy Uh, from uh northern brewer and dctc so so oh excellent uh, I'm glad yeah. uh, you're tuning in, Troy. Appreciate it. Thank you. And then, uh, yeah, the uh, to put a note on what Dan said, it used to be sativa with a C, and uh, the powers that be said, uh-uh, no, it's got to be something else. We're like, I have sativa with an S. So if you see it out there labeled the C, it's the same thing. Don't worry. You know, for example, <laughs> that is these. Mm-hmm. That looks like a C. It looks like a C to me as well. Any of our hop blends are uh, pre-hyphened with HS, which is Hop Solutions. So, you yep. know, to try and squelch any confusion there that an HS hop variety is a hop solution. So, exactly. Well, 
if anybody else has any more questions they'd like to ask, um, I'll let you think of those, but we're going to do another poll real quick here. Oh, yeah. So this is... This poll, you know, if you answer it right, it's about a million dollars, right? Is that what's going on here, Dan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Look at that. <laughs> if I could answer this, I would say I want to experiment more. I mean, I'm all in, but I want to know more. Like, I want to, like, I want to go kind of crazy on these things. I think there's a whole world here that, um, you know, hasn't been explored, unfortunately. And there's beers sitting out there like Stack Deck Sativa that, you know, interesting, new, fresh experience. And uh, so let me know if you're going to brewing with blends. I'm down. I'm right here. Yeah, and you know, I mean, the beauty of it is the brewing industry is always evolving, right? I mean, yeah. five, ten years ago, nobody was making anything hazy IPA wise. Well, why not uh, start blending hops and seeing what happens there, right? Want well, to do it with um, intention um, and and art and skill. Uh, you know, in some ways, these blends are you're brewing beer that's a representation of your skill and your art and your craft. And one of the things I really like about blends as someone in the hop industry is it's, you know, our ability to provide and create a recipe experience for you. Um, and it means a lot when people like Jason or other brewers enjoy what we've created. Um, we're not going to stop creating. I think creation and creativity and innovation are a heart of BSG hops, a uh, heart of what, you know, my role is here to accomplish and the heart of what we want to supply to you so that you can continue to make incredible beer. So I think that about does her, right? I think so. Looks like we've answered everyone's questions. Um, you know, and again, I'd like to just thank everyone for, uh, you know, registering, staying tuned, watching, going to YouTube and watching some of our past webinars. It's been you know, it's been great for us and we really want to keep doing these. So um, that takes you, the viewer, to tune in. So we appreciate that. And also, again, just like to remind everyone that past webinars are on our YouTube channel. Like I said, this is our 27th episode. So there's a lot of content on there. And look for the new episodes coming out this summer via our newsletter, social media, or even ask your customer sales rep. Um, they'll be able to help you out and show you where you can register for more. So Eric, Jason, love to just thank you guys for coming on. Um, especially you, Jason, taking the time to do this. I know you're a busy guy. And yeah, it's it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I, I really appreciate, uh, you know, the opportunity. Well, we love what you're making. Keep making it. For those of us that are local, we'll keep drinking it. So, Sounds good to me. Deal. And, you know, next year, uh, CBC being in Minneapolis 2022, people will have a chance to really uh, come and try some of your beers. So, Oh, 100%. So I'll have to make sure to uh, get some of that out there. Oh, yeah. But Absolutely. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best. All right. Well, from all of us at BSG and Stack Deck, I'd like to uh, thank everyone for tuning in and uh, cheers, everyone. Cheers.